Hi, I'm Josh from eSpares, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to diagnose and identify control problems in your washing machine. Um, modern washing machines all contain a computerized timer, um, and this is responsible for controlling all the different circuits in the machine, um, such as the drainage circuit, the heating circuit. Um, if you suspect that there's a fault in one of the circuits in your machine, um, it's usually much easier to test all the components in the circuit before suspecting that the problem lies in the control board. For example, in the drainage circuit, you would check the drain pump and the wiring. Um, the heating circuit, you would check the element, the thermostat and the wiring. Um, if you then suspect that the problem still lies in the circuit board, unfortunately, it's usually quite difficult to um, test the board and you'll actually just need to replace it altogether. The first problem we're going to look at is program issues. Um, most modern machines are designed to shut down if they detect a fault somewhere in the system. And this is usually accompanied by a fault code. Now a fault code is displayed on the front of the machine um, as a combination of letters and lights or numbers. Um, these fault codes vary from one manufacturer to another, so it can actually be just as helpful to watch your machine to diagnose where the fault is, such as in the drainage circuit or the heating circuit. Um, when you first turn your machine on, um, the first thing it does is to lock the door. Um, and it's then that it performs a self-check. Now, if in the self-check it detects um, a fault somewhere in the system, um, it'll shut down and display a fault code. Um, or if the door doesn't lock properly, um, it'll also detect that as a fault and shut down. Once the machine has passed the self-check stage, it will proceed to fill with water through these solenoid valves here at the back. Um, now most stages in a washing machine cycle are programmed to complete within a predetermined time. Um, so if your machine um, doesn't recognize that it's filled within a couple of minutes, it will usually shut down and display a fault code to stop any flooding occurring. Um, assuming that that's okay and the machine has filled with water, it will then move on to the next stage in the wash cycle. Now, once the water has filled to the correct level, um, the machine will then start to agitate it and heat it if required by that particular cycle. Um, once the temperature has been reached, the machine will then wash for a certain amount of time before draining the water away. And again, this has to happen within a predetermined time. So if it doesn't, the machine will shut down and display a fault code. Once the water is drained, it will then uh, do a short spin, um, and this is then followed by the rinse cycle. Um, now, the rinse cycle is very similar to the wash cycle. Water is brought in um, to a predetermined level within a certain amount of time. It's then agitated before being drained away. Um, most machines have at least two rinses in the rinse cycle, and on the final rinse, um, both solenoid valves at the back of the machine um, open up and flush any uh, conditioner from the detergent drawer down into the drum. Once your machine has completed the rinse cycle, it will begin to prepare for the final spin um, by balancing the load. And it does this by attempting to evenly distribute the weight of the load around the drum. However, if the load contains a particularly heavy item, such as a pair of jeans or a towel, amongst an otherwise lighter load, um, it will attempt to balance that heavier item amongst the load. Um, if it can't balance the load, it will simply refuse to spin, or it may just shut down and display a fault code. However, once the load has been balanced, the machine will spin and complete the wash cycle. If your machine is dead and it's not displaying any lights or anything on the front, then you're going to need to check it for continuity. Um, firstly, just unplug it from the wall and have a look at the fuse inside the plug to make sure it hasn't blown. Um, once you've established that it hasn't, you need to check for continuity between the plug and the control board. Now, if I just follow the path of the plug in through the machine, it comes in here and through this filter board here, it then passes along these cables to the plug on the control board here. Now, if I just grab my multimeter on a resistance or continuity setting and just check for continuity between the two, we can see that 
there's continuity on that connection. and also on that one. So that shows that power is getting to the circuit board, but there's probably a fault inside. Now the way that we need to check is by replacing the board with a new one. Next, let's have a look at if your machine is blowing a fuse when you plug it in. Um, usually this is caused by a short somewhere in the machine, and the short can either exist um, in the control board or within components um, around the machine. Um, you can check very easily for a short, if you just unplug the machine and using a multimeter on a resistance reading, check for the short across the plug through live and earth and live and neutral. Now, if there is a short there, it's gonna show up as a resistance reading of less than a couple of ohms. Um, Often uh, the first thing to uh, short is the heating element, so try disconnecting that and testing again for a short circuit. Um, if the short is gone, then that would indicate that the short does lie in the element. Obviously, you can double check by testing the element itself, um, and for a working element, the reading you're looking for is somewhere between 20 and 50 ohms, so obviously anything outside of that reading means you're going to need to replace the element. Um, on the other hand, if removing the element doesn't get rid of the short, um, the next thing to disconnect is the circuit board, and again, once you've done that, check for a short there. Um, if the short still hasn't gone, um, move further along the line and try checking on the filter board. And if the short still hasn't gone then, then it's likely to be in the plug and the cable and you need to replace those. To test the element, first disconnect these lugs like so. And then turn your meter onto a high resistance setting and measure from earth to one of the terminals, and from this you shouldn't get a reading. Then put your meter onto a low resistance setting and measure across the element. And on this one I'm getting a reading of about 27 to 28 ohms, so that indicates that this one's okay. If your machine is tripping the electricity, the process for diagnosing is largely the same. However, it may be that a normal meter won't show any fault being present. Now, in such a scenario, an engineer would use an insulation tester, such as a mega, and this produces 500 volts for determining where the breakdown has occurred. Um, again, it's likely to be due to the heater or heaters if it's a washer-dryer appliance, but if the tripping is occurring during the final spin, the motor is likely to be at fault where it's being worked at its hardest during that part of the cycle. Now one final thing about control boards and tripping faults is that a lot of the time it can be difficult to conclusively diagnose the fault. Um, sometimes a fault that's being caused by another component actually appears to be caused by the control board. Um, similarly, if you're replacing the control board, um, many of them now require professional programming on installation. So for that reason, you may prefer to use a fixed price repair service such as RepairCare. However, if you're confident in your diagnosis, eSpares stocks a full range of control boards and other components for washing machines. Thanks for watching.